Welcome to the deep dive. Today, um, we're going to take you guys on a wild ride, I think, through the world of outlaw motorcycle clubs. And, uh, you know, no leather jackets required for this one, though. Yeah, that's right. We're diving deep into this memoir by Edward Winterhalder. He was a high-ranking member of both the Rogues and the Banditos Motorcycle Clubs. Yeah, and he lived this life for decades. Yeah, and he does not hold back. He really doesn't. Edward shares like his incredible personal story and it gives us this really unique perspective on what it's actually like inside those clubs, you know, how we got there, what yeah. we learned along the way, just the whole thing. Yeah. And he starts right out with his difficult childhood. He was adopted, had an alcoholic father, lack of nurturing. And he really feels like that sort of set the stage for the rest of his life. What do you think about that from a psychological perspective? Yeah, it's interesting, right? I mean, I feel like that's something that we see a lot, like this idea that people are searching for belonging and acceptance, yeah. especially when they didn't get that early on. And you can see how the biker world with like this brotherhood, this camaraderie, like how that might appeal to someone like him. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That longing for belonging is a huge theme in the book. Totally. And it's easy to buy into those stereotypes of bikers. Yeah. Right. Like there are nothing but trouble. All violence and mayhem, like something out of a yeah. movie. But Edward really pushes back against that. He does. He talks about the love for motorcycles, of course, mm. the open road, you know, the friendships. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But he also doesn't shy away from some of the darker sides of it either. You know, right. he's not trying to sugarcoat it or anything. Yeah. He wants to give you the full picture. So you can see the human side of this world that's often misunderstood, I think. I think that's really important. Yeah. And he definitely lived that life to the fullest. Right. Right. Traveling the world getting caught up in that outlaw lifestyle, even doing time. But here's where it gets really interesting to me. Like Edward also had this whole other side to him, writing books about biker culture, producing TV shows. He even managed a rock band. Right. Yeah. It's like he was living these multiple lives, you know, and it makes you wonder, like, where does that drive come from? That need to be constantly doing and achieving things. Right. Totally. And speaking of unexpected turns, Wait till you hear about his love life hmm. because his daughter's therapist actually pointed out this pattern in his relationships that Edward was completely blindsided by. Oh, wow. Okay. So get this. The therapist noticed that Edward consistently dated women who had experienced childhood abuse or who struggled with low self-esteem. Wow. And a lot of them also happened to be trippers, which given Edward's line of work at the time, isn't completely surprising, I guess. Right. But still, it's this detail that could easily be overlooked. Right. But it's actually really revealing when you think about it. Yeah. It really makes you think about how our past experiences, even those subconscious ones, can influence our relationships in the present. Totally. Mm -hmm. It's like, are we really making choices mm -hmm. or is our past making those choices for us in a way? It's a great question. Yeah, it's heavy stuff. Yeah. It makes you think about those deep-seated motivations, mm -hmm. right? Like what's really driving those choices? And with Edward specifically, you have to wonder... If maybe his attraction to these women was connected to his own difficult upbringing. Right. Like maybe he was trying to recreate something familiar, even if it wasn't healthy. Exactly. Like that saying, we repeat what we don't repair. Oh, yeah, for sure. And that brings us to the whole nature versus nurture debate. Right. Yeah. And how much of who we are is because of our experiences and how much of it is just inherently us. And Edward actually wrestles with that question a lot in the book. Yeah. And there's that one part that always sticks out to me where he talks about meeting his biological father later on in life mm. and finding out that his father also had this really tough childhood and some of the same issues. Oh, wow. Yeah. Talk about a pattern repeating itself. It really makes you think. All right. It'd be easy to feel trapped by that kind of legacy, you know? Totally. But I think what's really powerful about Edward's story is that he doesn't play the victim at all. He owns his choices, mm. even the bad ones. He does. Yeah. He's surprisingly self-aware. Don't you think? Yeah. For someone who lives such a wild life, yeah. it's refreshing. Right. To hear that kind of honesty about his flaws and his mistakes. Yeah. And he's not afraid to call out the biker world either. You know? What do you mean? Like he talks about the violence, the criminal activities, the dark side that exists alongside all that brotherhood and freedom. I see what you mean. He's not trying to glamorize it. Yeah. He wants us to see the whole picture. Yeah. It's about understanding the complexities, not glorifying it. Right. Exactly. Because ultimately everyone has a story. Yeah. And that story is often a lot deeper and more complicated than we realize just from looking at someone. Totally. And for Edward, mm -hmm. it seems like his story is all about challenging those assumptions. Mm -hmm. You know, absolutely. He wants people to see the human side of a culture that's often demonized or misunderstood. Yeah. One hundred percent. 
you know, for me, that's what makes his story so compelling. Yeah. He's just laying it all out there. Yeah. Inviting us to learn along with him. And this is just the first volume, yeah. right? Right. This one covers his life up to the year 2000. Okay. So what's next? Well, he hints at more to come in his second volume. That one covers from 2001 to 2020. Oh, wow. So it picks up right where this one left off. Yeah. And he actually calls it the chronological evolution of an outlaw biker on the road to redemption. Wow. Road to redemption. Yeah. That's quite the title. Yeah. What do you think he means by that? Road to redemption. Huh. <laughs> That's a pretty loaded title, don't you think? Yeah. It makes me wonder, like, what does that even look like going from outlaw biker to someone on the road to redemption? It's a heck of a question. For sure. And I think that's part of what makes a memoir like this so interesting. Right. It's not just about the stuff that happened, but also about that journey of looking back and trying to make sense of it all. Totally. It makes you think about your own life, too. Right. Like, what does redemption even mean for him, for us? I mean, we're all going to have to figure that out for ourselves, I guess. Yeah. And hopefully we won't have to go through quite as much as Edward to get there. Right. No kidding. Yeah. But seriously, though. It's kind of inspiring in a way. Just the fact that he doesn't let his task define him. You know, he owns his mistakes, but he doesn't let them hold him back from trying to be better. That's a good point. He could have easily just kept going down that same path, but he made a choice to change. Exactly. And to share that journey with the world, which takes guts. For sure. So for anyone listening who's ready to dive into Edward's story for themselves, you can find links to both volumes of his memoir in the show notes. Definitely check it out. It's a wild ride. And a really thought-provoking look at a world we don't often get to see up close. <laughs> and on that note, I think we'll wrap up this deep dive into the world of Edward Winterhalter. What a story. It's raw. It's honest. And it's a good reminder that no matter what life throws our way, we're all capable of change and growth. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep.